This is GA Center, your look at the Grand Arena Championships of content creators from around the globe. Here are your hosts, Flair from Gaming Embers and the Nev from the Escape Pod cast. Hello, 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 you lovely people, and welcome to week two of GA Center. Uh, you'll if, if, if you're just coming in and you don't realize it's week one, if this is your first show, all you've got to do is look to the top right of the corner and it'll tell you what month and what phase we're in. So obviously Absolutely. this is the first month of the season and we're in phase two. Well, we're not in. Fa we've finished phase two, but you mm -hmm. know what I mean. You know what I mean. So we're in the uh, lock in for phase three. We're locked now we're in, in the defense setting. No. Oh, yeah. No, we're on defense. We're in defense. Three. Yes, we are. We are locked mm. in, and people are putting out their defenses. Not done mine yet, but I'll get around to that at some point this evening. So, <laughs> how are you today, then, Flair? Oh man, let me tell you, it's been it's been pretty busy around here. Oh yeah, it's so, it's uh, always yeah, I, busy. I, I'm, I'm pretty day. excited, you know, uh, in terms of GAC stuff. I finally threw the uh, no escape Zeta on Vader, so I'm going to be rocking the the, the merciless this yep, next no. week. I, I know I know what you I know what you mean. Uh, I'm doing the exact same thing on my account as well. Looking forward to uh, 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 test running him on uh, you know maybe some geos or I don't know yet. Just gonna have to mm -hmm. wait and see. Gonna it's have gonna to be wait fun. See. So you uh, you uh, want to kick off with the opening messages before we get into the show? Uh, yeah. So um, just as a reminder, guys, um, we will not be um, on the show live. We will not be recognizing um, bits subs and um stuff like that um thankfully our moderators in chat paul being one of them um will be thanking you all personally in chat at the end of the show we will take some time to thank you all though um but just because of the nature of the programming and everything we're gonna we're gonna be blasting right through this um also we have done a little bit of changes to the the, the scorecards um to the uh, the league tables which you will find uh once we uh, get through this first round of people We've done a little adjusting, a little condensing. We've had to make sure we've acknowledged a few um, a few um, informational errors on last episode, and uh, we have gotten those fixed and are moving forward. Okay, so let's get stuck into it, shall we? Just a little bit. Yeah, let's go. Ooh. And as usual... <laughs> We have to start with Flair. So, of course. Flair, Flair's week, big fail. Big fail right at the start of the week. He Ugh. failed miserably to full clear his opponent. Didn't have the mir minerals to beat the Geos. Uh, he still got the full clear and he still got the win. So, hey, sorry, still got the win. So, hey, whatever. Anyway, um, uh, uh, it, right, round two was a bit of a yawn fest. Like, you know, just such a boring, flawless victory. Mm -hmm. Um... Um, but uh, R3 was jam-packed with undersized victories. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I guess you, uh, you, uh, you, you just kind of like mocked your opponent's defense. But uh, Oh, Flair, dude, let me tell you. 3-0 uh, for the week. that round three was hilarious. It was just like, really? But 3-0 for the week. 3-0 for the week. So uh, uh, good, for, good for Flair. I will take it. Uh, next, we actually have a new person. Uh, we have two new people this uh today um and the first one he's actually a a div seven player but he's already at the gp to be in div six um because um this is going to be an ever-growing show we are going to be including new people as as some people fall off or if something happens um and infinim is uh one of them um so new contender and let me tell you um he had a full clear round one with a no show had absolutely no issues um, round two was a full clear as well. He had plenty of underdogs. He got some holds with his bugs and his neat gun ray uh, and completely shut the opponent down uh, for going way too hard on his defense. Uh, round three was a full clear um, and his opponent clearly underestimated the first order. Uh, Hux held twice and uh, got the triple crown. Starting off early with the triple crowns. 
And we're on to Bulldog. Now, uh, I, I don't know what was going on in round one with Bulldog because he only attacked two teams. Um, uh, his opponent, you know, uh, uh, admittedly, his opponent did auto-deploy. So I guess Bulldog kind of thought he knew he was going to win because it was an auto-deploy. Uh, round two, he really turned on the shine, getting a flawless victory with undersized wins against all teams except for the fleet. So undersized victories across the board in round two. And round three, it's uh, nice to reach the final and um, go up against someone who doesn't even attack, didn't even attack. So final round, flawless victory, Bulldog with the Triple Crown. Nice. Commander Cody, um, round one, he snuck in some underdogs everywhere he could, uh, got the full clear. Um, his bugs did hold on defense. Uh, round two, another one-shot full clear. Um, and, and the banners would tell you that his opponent did not even show up to the party, but they tried. They tried once. And the Dames of Dathomir, um, you know, he, the dude tried to throw his girls against uh, Cody's girls, and just clearly the cat fight was not going in his opponent's favor. Uh, round three was not pretty, though. I had to two tap, uh, had actually, no, had to three tap a CLS uh, and had to, um, had to clean up a Bugs team with a Padme. Uh, the Empire just did not have the minerals to do that one. And, uh, you know, while his opponent failed using ships, pulled off just enough banners to, uh, to snag the win out from under Cody's nose. Uh, on to Bringer of Death. Now, round one didn't get the full clear, but a very entertaining because he got to Utini bomb the Geos. And everybody loves an Utini bomb. Mm -hmm. So that alone makes the, uh, the, that alone makes the win um, a good one for round one. Uh, round two, another win without a full clear, but again, plenty of entertainment. Tried and failed a Malik solo um, against Murder Bears, which was quite amusing. Uh, round three, though, was a loss as uh, Bringer had the door slammed in his face by a Darth Revan team, but still two and one. Nice. Uh, brain kill. Uh, round one, solid. No issues. Um, you got a hold from his bugs, and then you look at the history, his foe just stops it's like no i'm done here uh, round two smooth as a baby's bottom let me tell you you got the malik solo you got the Drevin solo um and his opponent just tried to throw everything he could um and just could not stop the malevolence couldn't stop the bugs couldn't stop gg it was ridiculous um round three again smooth no issues at all um opponent did manage to clear more than a few territories though um but malevolence you know you know, took one look at the malevolence, tried to throw a rock at it, just didn't do anything. Another triple crown. And that brings up the Division 5-6 table. So we're starting to see things happen now. Now that we've had a couple of weeks, we're starting to see things happen. But we do have three clear people there at the top, don't we? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a note for everyone who's watching, these tables are growing. Um, these tables will be reflective of the entire six-month period and not just the week. So the stat cards that we show on the individual, individual competitors will show the weekly stats. Um, but again, this is going to be, this will only get bigger from here. So let's get on to the next division. So the Lone Gunman. Round one, nice round with a full clear and two cheeky solos with Chewie and Darth Maul, which I thought was quite unusual. Um, never seen a solo with Darth Maul before, so it was interesting to see that. Round two, very efficient, flawless victory with a Malik solo and two battle wins with duos. Great for the banner score. Really good for the banner score, as you can tell. R3, no solos in the final, kind of, uh, you know, tightened up a little bit, uh, though he did face a very, very tough defense. So no undersized really had to use full squads, but he got the win and he picked up a triple whammy, which is three and oh. Nice uh, stone uh, round one had a no show, um, but. Even though his opponent didn't attack him, still tries to get the full clear. Um, fell to a Chimera fleet, had to two-tap an Empire team, uh, who kind of snuck a Nihilus in there. Round two, clean sweep without any issues. Um, his opponent only got a single win against his bugs and just stop at GG. Um, round three was was a tough one. There was a Nihilus-led Sith team that, uh, you know, there was a first timeout with the First Order. Palpatine and the Empire just didn't have the stuff to kill him uh, and ultimately required JTR to finish it off. Um, but 
clearly uh, his opponent uh, tried to throw some stuff at his clones and just did not have what it takes, uh, giving him a 3-0 for the week. So Excellent job, Stone. Renard the Fox, one of our friendly foreigners. Um, nice, easy first round. Picked up a flawless victory um, with the, uh, 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 you know, thanks to a defense, uh, thanks to a defense hold. So, you know, got the win, got the flawless victory. Round two, picked up a full clear, but not a flawless victory, thanks to three losses. Um, but he got the win, got the win, uh, uh, and his opponent ran out of teams. Uh, round three, Picked up the win, but again, didn't quite have enough for the full clear. His opponent tried very, very hard to sandbag him, but uh, failed miserably as Renard cleared all but two territories. Um, as you can see, he picked up the 20 wins, eight losses. Decent banner score. It's going to be good for him. Triple whammy. Nice. Orlamar, uh, round one, solid full clear. No issues at all. Uh, his opponent, unfortunately... Literally was throwing everything. Got through the kitchen just to take out Padme. Uh, but after that, you know, once you're done with the kitchen, you have to go to the dining room. And then you have to go to the living room, which he had to do for Newt, then Karth, then Admiral Akbar, uh, and through the rest of the house, uh, just everything at his defense. Round two, lost a ton of banners, um, having to deal with Shock T clones team. Um, still had to deal with boss uh, the, the bugs. Um, his Padme did get two holds, though, uh, but unfortunately, um, just didn't have enough to take the win. Round three, breath of fresh air, one shot, full clear, no problems at all. Uh, got two holds with his clones and his Dreven team, so pretty good comeback there. Moyo, my first triple crown of the evening. Flawless victory round one. His opponent failed to respond in kind with one loss. Round two, again, flawless victory. But this time, his, his opponent just, just didn't even bother. Just, just didn't bother. Um, and then, obviously, round three, it was another flawless victory. But uh, uh, I think the strongest thing about the win was the, uh, um, the opponent only placed a fleet. I mean, who does that in the final? Seriously, who just puts a fleet down in the final? So, triple oh, crown, so three and out Three and Otomoyo. Canada's favorite son, Andy Beads. Uh, full clear all three rounds. Uh, round one, his Bears and Django stood tall. His Padme took two teams in order to kill. Uh, round two, barely, barely had victory in sight. Um, but his opponent was literally more efficient by a single banner. Um, unfortunately, the Canadian had to cry his tears of maple syrup. Um, but round three was a solid hold, though. Um, Boskin, his bears, just kept his defense going. Um, uh, you know, as, as good as he did with the full clears, that, that single banner loss meant that he has to go home with the 2-1 this week. Vendetta with a new icon. It was just a circle with a big V. So uh, he's gone for uh, Guy Fawkes and V for Vendetta. I like it. Mm -hmm. Vendetta had a triple whammy this week. Started off round one, flawless victory without a response, which is always a good start. Round two, flawless victory again, ruthlessly efficient. Two solos, a duo, and a triple to take the win. And final round caused him no problems whatsoever. Um, uh, uh, lost a nest solo. Um, mm. uh, and, and couldn't get past the fleet, but still got the win. All right, Yeti. Uh, round one, Yeti and his feline friends swept through, had no issues at all. Uh, the Dames of Dathomir held twice, and uh, still standing. Just, you know, you can you can go and see them. They're still standing right now. Um, round two, he took on a fresh Kraken and uh, brought home the Calamari. Um, just. Opponent didn't know what to do. Had to three tap his bugs, two tap his boss. Uh, couldn't take his newt after three battles. Uh, in round three, his opponent had to, had to two tap, and uh, the the dames of Dathomir just did not have anything to do with any of this. Um, and and you know, according to Yeti, this is exactly what you get when you tailor your defenses to what your opponent has used in the previous weeks. Um, a solid triple crown. And that's using the tools at hand wisely by the people, uh, thankfully, uh, Swaga, SWGH.GG, who provides all of our stats. We got a showing from Marco this week, <laughs> who unfortunately got booted last week. So, oh, man. Um, didn't get a triple. 
Unfortunately, only a two and one. Um, no full clear in round one, but thankfully his opponent didn't attack. So the, uh, the low score didn't stop him from getting the win. Round two, lost to a very tight fight with his opponent by only 12 banners, despite having lesser losses than his opponent. So clearly his opponent was more efficient with his banner wins. And round three, didn't fall clear, but he did pick up the win again because his opponent just didn't attack. A lot of that going around at the moment. All right, Geek Girl. Uh, round one was was tough. She had a two-tap of Phoenix team after trying to get a little cheeky with Vader and the Bounty Hunters. Um, you know, she tried to throw Darth Revan against the Dames Dathomir, and uh, a Sith trio just took three teams to put down. Um, but her GG kept them at bay with five holds. Um, you know, trying to trying to slaughter it and just could not. Round two had a little mess up with JTR in the first order. Um, and unfortunately, her opponent was, again, just slightly more efficient um, and, you know, took the win there. She was not playing any games at all in round three. Full clear, one shot, snagged three holds with her newt, who is still standing tall today. And we're on to JKW, my fellow Brit. Only got a two and one this week. A nasty, oh, nasty defeat in round one. Um, unable to get past his opponent's fleet. And it always sucks when you can't get past your opponent's fleet. Round two came back strong with a full clear. Um, but uh, again, it seems to be happening a lot. No show from his opponent. And round three was a flawless victory. Um, getting his opponent to give up after only a few battles, which is always nice. There is, there's the division table. And it's all... Oh, that's a lot of people on a 100% yes, record. Yes, that is. Oh, geez. Oh, that is going to be like, a, that. I'm sorry, but three, four. As you can tell, obviously, we had a separate three and we had a separate four. But we have combined the two because the defense is being set and the, def and the offense teams required are the exact same as three and four. And as you can see, oh, my God, we've got what? One, two, three, four, five people on 100% records. Look how close it is at the top. It's less than 500 banners between the top four. That is this absolutely is a, It's bonkers. a tight race. It is um, going to be there. it's going to be fun to uh, to watch and see how that progresses throughout the uh, throughout the year definitely. Okay, so we're on to Division 2. Fort Moore triple whammy 3 and 0. Good start in round 1 with a full clear, good defense, but no flawless victory due to trouble with the with the opponent's fleet, unfortunately. Um, round two picked up the flawless victory with ruthless efficiency. Lots and lots of undersized victories. And uh, round three was a big, big old battle of the defenses. Big old battle of defenses in this round. Um, but uh, Moore came out the winner with the full clear. And as you can see, did pick up a hell of a lot of holds. Nice. A Boma. Had a, had a tough time starting out. Uh, ha had to take four teams to put down a Darth Revan team. Uh, finally, the Phoenix team actually managed to slay Malik. Um, thankfully, this one wasn't even bothered to show up. Round two, full clear, one shot, no issues at all. Uh, and again, another no-show. Um, after that, um, round three, he had to two-tap the bugs, uh, but he pulled off a win with two holds um, with his GG and his name's Adathomir, um, giving him the 3-0 for the week. Um, uh, uh, little, little, little unknown fact about Bomberfett. Did you know that he has a YouTube channel with 27,000 subscribers on where he makes balloon animals? Right, you're telling me this the other day. I was like, yeah. holy crap, it's a small world. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Bomberfett is a, uh, a balloon animal aficionado. So if you need to know how to make balloon animals for a ch children's birthday party, he's the man you go talk to. Interesting. Okay, so we're on to Wrangler. Wrangler only got a 2 on one unfortunately, which is a shame because he started off so bright. Flawless victory. But it was a close, flawless victory. He only edged out his opponent by seven banners. That's a close, flawless victory. Round two, uh, it doesn't happen often. Um, uh, but uh, you get a full clear with 1921. You'd expect the win, wouldn't you? Well, mm. his opponent was ruthlessly efficient and Ooh. absolutely trounced him. 
with 1,946 banners. So that's where his loss was, unfortunately. But he did come back strong in round three with a flawless victory, even closer than round one, winning by only four banners. So uh, squeaky bum time for Wrangler this week. Jeez, whatever. Whatever went in and he said whatever to round one, full clearing more efficiently and snagging plenty of underdogs in his offense. Round two, again, tossed the guy aside and just said, you know, screw you. Got two holds with Gigi and Newt. Uh, and again, it was once more around the track in round three. Got a hold with Hux and his first order. And uh, as whatever has commented, uh, researching your opponent and making your defense as hard as possible is key for a comfortable victory. And uh, another another no show from last week remembered to uh, to log in this week. So, uh, yeah, for the first time, you're actually seeing some stats from Scribe and uh, he had a triple whammy. And boy, did he need it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, basically, if if you forget to join, it's classed as an 0 and 3. That's that's basically it. So to pick up a 3 and 0 immediately after failing to join is definitely something you want to do. Round one started off with a bang, getting a flawless victory and 1,924 banners. Round two was only a full clear, um, but his defense held and he picked up that all-important will, including beating a Galactic Legend Ray. And round three, he finished off the wing, uh, finished off the week with a win. Didn't get the uh, the full clear, but it was a no-show from his opponent, so it was pretty much a given that he was going to win. <sighs> <laughs> Come Again, on, I, do your I, worst. I don't like having to always cover you, but I have to. Um, you got a little cheeky in round one, Neil. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, little birdie told me that uh, your GG couldn't finish off a Darth Revan, and your Wampa got absolutely crapped on by a Rogue One team. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you know that's supposed to be a layup drill. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did get two holds, though, and your opponent couldn't do the full clear. Uh, round two, dude, you're round two and round three. You had some stupid, easy battles to do. Um, I know biscuit was commenting, man, if only you saw what he had to deal with and what's we'll the talk RNG about gods blessed me. They blessed me <laughs> clearly. Um, but yeah, you had, you had cakewalks for both of your, uh, both of your, uh, round two and three and uh, guys, it's going to take a lot more than what you're throwing right now to keep this Brit under control. Okay, so we're on to Ram B. Um, uh, in his own words, round one, he got whacked. Like, he got whacked. <laughs> Heavy defeat, but he held his opponent to just a win. Uh, round two, lovely, lovely, flawless victory with a massive six undersized team. So, really came back strong. And round three finished off the week with a win. But again, had trouble with the ships, which do seem to be his Achilles heel at the moment. But still two and one. Next. Little Gator, uh, you would have thought that uh, that he actually didn't hate ships so much. Um, he lost twice to a set of bears, but his defense held strong, taking a lot to completely put down. Uh, round two, man, you know how awful it is to feel like when you've set you have your defense set and you forget to even attack because Gator didn't even do that. Uh, he did get a few holds though. Which is, which is important for those additional stats. But round three, you know, took one loss to a Drevin, and that was it. Uh, but and his gas completely shut down his opponent on defense. Mr. Jigabachi. Okay, so Mr. Jigabachi did only get a two and one, but a very, very, very colorful week. Very colorful week. Round one didn't just like one of those purple moments where you just look at your opponent and you're like really no meta teams at all so round one faced no meta teams so uh, as you can imagine he dunked on them really really hard flawless victory round one round two tough battle tough mm -hmm. battle with an opponent from brazil apparently um full clear but it went down to one loss in jigs column unfortunately uh, round three came up against a kyle and uh, as, if you can remember, there was a lots and lots of Kyle memes floating around immediately after this. <laughs> Didn't set a full D. And um, 
got Jig's fleet slammed in his face. So uh, two and one for Mr. Jigabachi. There's the biscuit. Um, went three and zero. Oh. He got full clears every time. Uh, his opponents never full cleared him. Uh, they did find out uh, that Gas with Arc Trooper was able to take on Relic Five and Relic Seven bugs. Uh, as he says, uh, I would not recommend trying this on purpose, though. Uh, <laughs> you know, he had there was very meta. Uh, very meta heavy defenses. He had he lost quite a bit of banners, but he still got the full clears. He still got the wins, and that's important here. And there is Division Two. Um, Division Two. It's a little bit more. There's a little bit more to Division Two than there is to the uh, to the three four. I think um, we've only got. There's a lot of person. five ones here. It's, yeah, it's a lot anybody's of anybody's game right there. But Fort Moore is the only person currently in Division 2 with uh, a 100% record. I'd be curious to know uh, if he maintains that. I mean, obviously, he doesn't have as many banners as everybody below him. But banners is more about the goal difference. You look at a table and you've got your wins and you've got your losses and you've got the scores. That's pretty much what banners are going to be. Banners mm -hmm. are going to be the uh, the goal difference. But a lot of people on 5-1. Glad to see I've uh, climbed a couple of spots. I think I was in fifth. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that week I just had really, really, really helped me out. I'm up to third. Biscuit Weasel, oof, I am so coming for you. You had a, such a big lead on me, and I am coming for you. I'm so coming for you. Scribe, really, really, I mean, you're still at the bottom. You're still at the bottom, mate, but three from three is uh, uh, better than where you could be, especially after having a, uh, having a no-show. Mm-hmm. Anything to add, Flair? I, th I think we're good. I mean, clearly, you've got your work cut out for you. Uh, you know, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I hope that Biscuit keeps his lead over you. <laughs> well, I, I can see, I can see a beautiful rivalry kicking in there. Beautiful rivalry. But this is the end of Division Two, so uh, you know what's coming up after the break. We're going to get into all the heavy hitters, all the Div One, all the elite people. So uh, uh, stick around, and we'll be back after these. Brief messages. SWGOH.GG is your one stop site for the raw data behind the game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. From complete gear lists to intuitive stats behind all of your favorite hollow table heroes. SWGOH.GG has it all. With a .GG account, you can get a complete view of your own roster, see how you match up against other players, and even check out the history of your own Grand Arena Championship matches. You can also see what your opponent used on you to give you a better understanding of counters and team compositions to improve your gameplay. Did you know that they also have some great Patreon features as well? Ad-free browsing of their site, guild information, and manual information requests are included in their three levels of Patreon support. Check out the site for more details. That's swgoh.gg. Unleash your hollow table potential today. Did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Go Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. For as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content. And also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. Have you been interested in getting items 3D printed but haven't wanted to buy one of those expensive printers? Are you looking for a literally one-of-a-kind tech gift gadget? Evil Genius 3D Printing and Gadgets is your one-stop shop for both of those items. Nerd owned and Escape Pod approved, put Lenny the Evil Genius to work for you. If you can dream it, he could possibly make it. Contact Lenny at EvilGenius3DPrinting at gmail.com for more information. That's EvilGenius3DPrinting at gmail.com. Get something unique in your hands. And welcome back into the second segment of the show. And as you can see, we have our first competitor up from Div 1. It's 
time to get into the heavy hitters. This is where the meat hits the metal or the metal hits them. I don't know what the phraseology of that turn of phrase is, but you know what I mean? The big guns. Why, why do you British people check like American idioms and it just I, doesn't work? Well, if I used British idioms, you wouldn't understand what I was bloody well talking about, would you? This is true, but okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> okay, so we're on to Spartan. Spartan picked up a triple whammy. He did get three wins. Um, scrappy first round, four losses, but he still came good in the end, and he did get the full clear. Round two, again, another scrappy win, but by virtue of a solid defense... And I do mean, look, I mean, he's got 10 holds there. Solid defense. He got the victory. And round three, defense, defense, defense has been the key to this week for Spartan. Um, full clear to book and very, very, very well earned. Wiggins Bog had a solid first two rounds. Uh, flawless clean sweeps. Round two managed to get a ton of holds with the shock T. Uh, round three, he did trip up to the bugs, but but pressed on, got the clear, um, and his fleet took two to took two to take down. So uh, Wiggins Bog did solid this time around. The heartthrob of the outer rim, you love him, you know him, Urzatron did not have a particularly good week. I mean, round one was a great start. Great start to the week for us. Uh, he got a full clear and his opponent just didn't 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 even show. Did not bother showing. But round two, yeah, round two was not a good round. Uh, he faced um, two brick walls. One brick wall called GL Kylo and the other brick wall was GG. And it cost him a lot of losses, a hell of a lot of losses. So he didn't pick up the win in round two. And that just compounded um, a, a pretty bad week. Round three, again, too many losses in the final round with GG causing more grief for the heartthrob of the Outer Rim with uh, um, more defeats. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back and fighting fit for next week, though. Cubs fan Han. Uh, you know, number one, he did really good last week and he continues it this week. He got the full clear, one shot. He only won by a couple banners, but you know what? A couple banner win is still a win regardless. Round two tripped up on Newt, but everything else uh, went smoothly. Got full, got seven holds on his defense in that round alone. Um, round three, full clear, one shot. Newt and Padme got three holds. Uh, he pulled a ton of holds this week. Um, and, and man, excellent job. Bitcoin, my second triple crown of the evening. Um, you don't have too many in your, your rank up this time, do you? Yeah, no, I didn't get that many last week. But uh, this week, yeah, another triple crown. Bitcoin, uh, round one, flawless victory was the order. And he did it with flying colors. And round two, oh my God. Round two was a monster, monster flawless victory. Pound his opponent into the ground, bagging 1,943 banners. And Jeez. round three, finished off the week to get his triple crown with his third flawless victory and just an excellent performance throughout the week. Black Mamba. Uh, had to three tap a crew uh, in round one and uh, just scraped by narrowly by two banners. Um, he had a couple holds in round two, though. Man, slacker completely slaughtered Ray. Uh, the battle of the GLs. Uh, Padme did take a hold on defense, so uh, got that there. Uh, round three, uh, had some issues with efficiency. Um, and unfortunately, um, they both got clears, but his opponent was just a little more efficient and uh, stole the victory right from under him. Ranger, this is Kyber, Kyber, searching for Kyber. Yes, Ranger's, Ranger's hunt for Kyber continues, and uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to get it. Triple whammy this week, triple whammy for the Ranger. Round one, good, solid, full clear against the opponent. Just didn't bother showing. Like I said, we've been getting a lot of that. We had a lot of that last week. A lot of people didn't show. Um, not just round ones, but round twos and round threes, and 
you expect somebody to occasionally not show up on round one, but I mean, yeah, we've had a lot of that this week. Anyway, mm-hmm. round two blitzed his opponent. Flawless victory. Uh, I mean, his his opponent just just didn't even bother finishing. <laughs> That's how much Ranger, you know, demoralized his opponent. And um, re- uh, re- uh, round three, he really, really, really turned on the shine um, for the uh, uh, for the final finishing if finishing off his opponent with a Malik solo and uh, a galactic ray to the face of his opponent. <laughs> Going nerdy, bad. Um, you know, truth be told, what he told us it just does better than what I could ever say. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I just got to quickly interrupt. I, I, I did a double take when I saw that losses number. I was like, is this a typo? 59. I really, I genuinely thought that was a loss. I ge- sorry, a typo. I genuinely thought that was a typo. Yeah, he doesn't even mention round one. Um, Round one, through the kitchen sink, through all the kitchen, the bathroom, um, through a, a, a good lot of the house, um, at, at his opponent's defense and just, just, oh man, dude, he had an awful time. Um, but as he says, I went one and two spent 27 attempts trying to beat a Darth Revan team, mostly, mostly for kicks and giggles. Um, maybe you can't go one and two, but when you fail, he fails hard. Uh, but you're right. Went one and two. Uh, gonna take Ando 90s point of view and say that it was due to testing. Oh, the grid is on the grid. The man with the most beautiful hair in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Yes, grid. Grid only got a two and one this week. Uh, he had one of those, those really just one of those horrible starts to the week. You, you, you're everything's going well. You get your full clear. You think you've stomped your opponent into the ground, and what happens? You go and get beat by one banner, one single banner. That was all that stood between Grid and his opponent in round one. But uh, he did not let that phase him. In round two, uh, he uh, he got the full he got the flawless victory, and uh, this was enough to see him the victor. Round three. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what was going down round three. Uh, he had Urs and Cubs bugging him during the final round. Uh, uh, did it help him? Did it hinder him uh, with a flawless victory? Who cares? Uh, two and one for grid for the week. Micaeus, uh the modder, uh, as, as he tells us, uh, I made the mistake of trying GK Zerus trick versus Kylo and Malik. Uh, there's limited options with that, so uh, so it, it went how it went. Not great, but he still got it. Uh, then he throughout this week he crushed two Galactic Legend rays. He does not have a GL, uh, so it was an interesting ride for him. Um, it, you know, took a couple attempts in, with Ray and uh, just did a decently good job. Still got full clears. Moon, one of the production team. Only got a two and one this week, um, uh, but there is no better start to a week than uh, uh, getting a flawless victory brutally delivered in round one. Um, his opponent just, it didn't even, it wasn't even close. He just smashed him to the side. R2, a little bit too close for comfort. Round two, way too close for comfort. Lost too many banners. Mm. Um, uh, lost too many banners, but he did clinch victory by 10 banners. It really, really was one of those, oh my God, how many times am I going to lose and still get enough banners? So he got it. But uh, you hate to have it happen to you, especially after winning round one and round two. Uh, went toe-to-toe with a top 10 player and lost one banner. One stinking banner. But, I mean, his oh, opponent man. was was in the top 10. So uh, you you know that your uh, your opponent is going to be good if they're in the top 10. It's just Ian. Uh, round one had a full clear. His crew held for one. Uh, round two, his gas, literally, when you see the health bar on the Tarkin after he tried to throw a gas solo against the Empire, um, you'd want to smack yourself in the face. Thankfully, he got to make the joke that uh, he, he can joke around and say that, hey, Rose Tico actually killed something. Um, but unfortunately, he lost by three banners on that round. Uh, round three, 
is uh, you know having to deal with a slacker, a JKR, and a Newt, and having a lot of issues with those um, caused him to lack a full clear. Uh, un- unfortunately, causing him to uh, to go home with the one and two this week. Oh yeah, one two is gonna hurt. One two is gonna hurt. DB official, another brother from the United Kingdom, uh, had a pretty decent week. I mean, his round one, true grit, true grit. His round one was one of those one of those rounds where it, it, the, the men. It's where the men get separated from the boys. Came up against a GL Ray six attempts but came out triumphant with a full clear and a victory. That's grit. Not giving up. Lost to a GL Ray five times. Still went back. Got the victory. Round two. Picked up a very cheeky win and a flawless victory against an opponent. Taking victory by only three banners. And, oh yeah, I hate to see it. Especially after putting in all that hard work with round one and round two. He came undone in round three. In the finals... Um, through a, uh, a more, basically it was a more banner efficient opponent. Um, uh, he, he just lost to, um, uh, 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 lost too many characters and had to settle for a, uh, had to settle for a two, one, unfortunately. Oh man. Mud bum, our bum, 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 bum. Uh, he was on the show last week and, uh, as, as good as he did last week, unfortunately this week was, uh, was not as nice to him. Um, so uh, you look at his round one, he got the full clear. He was really efficient on his banners. Um, but when you look at round two, he got the full clear. Unfortunately, uh, he was just not efficient enough to snag the win. Um, and, you know, he only on round three, he had some issues. He had a, he had a trip up to Slacker, to Kira, and to a Drebin team uh, and only managed to get a single hold on defense in that round. Um, unfortunately, just not enough to take the win. So he went one and two this week. DPK, you know him. You've seen and a him. new member to uh, a new, new list he, to the roster. He guests regularly in the chain gang. Um, uh, uh, he has uh, been regularly doing his uh, GACs, whether they're streamed or whether they're posted. Uh, didn't used to, but has really, really, really come to the forefront with his GACs. And we just had to bring him on in. Um, now, normally at this point, we would be talking about Mobile Gamer, but mobile gamer has quit we don't know if he's coming back so better to have somebody that's active than someone who is inactive and dpk was our first reserve so welcome to the league so let's get down to business um first week talked on the show didn't have a good week dpk didn't have a good week um beat down a gl ray to get a full clear and a victory in round one but then round two came around no gl ray but lost by a single banner, which totally sucked. I mean, you're going to be, you're, you're going to kind of have a little bit of difficulty getting the victory, especially if you're scoring under 1900. And that's what happened in round two. And um, uh, it's nice when it happens. Round three, uh, DPK got to fight a shard mate. So, you know, you, you get to have a nice bit of friendly bit of banter and you get to chat and you get to see how uh, a shard mate uses their full roster and, yeah, his, his shard mate re- clearly used his uh, full roster and uh, uh, beat him, <laughs> unfortunately. So uh, one and two for DPK this week. And all be all. Uh, so it, we, we've been referencing to a lot of people who uh, kind of reported in with their uh, with their their own takes on their GACs. And some of them are, are, are good, you know, better wording than we could ever do. Um Set a usual tough D in round one and two and won pretty comfortably. Uh, he had a tight defense set to counter a potential Ray in round three. Uh, unfortunately, lost on efficiency since his opponent kept Ray for offense, uh, never going back to a light defense. Uh, also, he got to use his G7, his Gear 7 Luke, for some pretty awesome performances this week. Got him out, got out of a bind in round two by clearing a high relic gg team with leftover jedi like ben and barris um but uh, and that's even considering that his g jedi knight Revan couldn't do the job so uh end all be all did a solid job and there is the bottom of division one going nerdy 
Dude, sir, you, you, yeah, you, you need, you need to, um, you need to do something. <laughs> do something, buddy. Um, Urza, eh, he pro we, we know Urza's better than his current position. Um, but when you, uh, when you have those nightmare rounds, you just have those nightmare rounds. We know that uh, it's not going to be like that all the time. And we've got Black Mamba just there in the middle of the table with Spartan. Uh, they didn't have particularly good weeks last week, so uh, good week this week, and that's what's happening. You know, it'll lift you up the table. Uh, also, um, Nerdy, uh, can we just challenge you to get your loss, your, your battle loss number to get as high as possible? <laughs> because, yeah. Anyways, the top of Division One standard. Uh, I mean, seriously, look, look at this. Bitcoin, we have, we have four 6 and O's this week. Uh, Bitcoin, Cubs, Van Han, Wiggins, Bog, Ranger. Um, these guys are are doing solid. Yeah, um, four people at one hundred percent. Um, it's, it'd be interesting to see how long it lasts because we've only got one in Div Two, um, but we've got four, four in Div One. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how long these uh these masters of the GAC can uh, maintain their one hundred percent ratings. So a uh, couple of five ones, um, and obviously Mudbum DB. And we've obviously got uh, Spartan underneath. So there's a bit of a fight for the middle of the table. So mm -hmm. uh, just just get yourself into that top half. You'll see yourself there eventually. And uh, it'll all come good. I'm sure it will. We're only into the second week. Let it let it breathe. Let it breathe. It'll get better. It'll look more interesting. Again, we're covering this over six months. Yeah. So uh, what happen. this is just the first two weeks. Okay, so we're on to the elites. My... Hetero life partner and co-host of my other show, Paul. Do we even call him elite? Uh, he's elite by virtue of his accounts GP. Oh, man. So Paul had the complete opposite this week to last week. One and two. Um, and uh, uh, primarily down to failing to his old foe, GG. In round <laughs> one, failing, failing against GG. I, I don't know what his... Problem is with GG, but you know, seems to be a major bogey team for him. Um, and this continued in round two with GG giving him even more grief and, uh, and and just stopping him dead in his tracks. So many losses against GG teams. I, I would, I, I'm pretty sure that about 90% of those losses were against GG teams. But thankfully for him, uh, no GG in the final round. And uh, he ended the week with a flawless victory. Thanks probably due to the fact that his opponent didn't have a GG in defense. But his opponent did have a Padme, which is his kryptonite. But, uh, but yeah. On to Fruit Ninja Mike, uh, also known as Pete2204 on uh, Twitch. And uh, again, he also gave us reports. 3-0. and uh, Again, second week in a row within the season. But uh, he's 3-0 for four weeks straight of his own GACs. And apparently only faced one legit opponent this week who couldn't clear his slacker. Uh, only one of the players cleared his board, uh, despite not a lot of not a lot of holds. Um, and I guess they just gave up. Uh, his Jedi Luke is still not geared up. Darth Vader is his savior, uh, grabbing a new Ray counter for free. Uh, and now he can consider sending even more on his defense. Oh, ho, ho. Scorch the Hoss, the WWE of the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes universe. Oh, my God. If you want entertainment, then you definitely want to go and see one of his streams. Uh, his, his, his round one, he was living the dream. I mean, he really was living the dream. And uh, pure, pure cockiness is the only way to describe his round one. He soloed every defensive team set against him. Every single team he soloed, but uh, I think his uh, his cockiness and his arrogance probably got the best of him because um, uh, he crashed and burns on the ship, and it took three losses before he finally beat his opponent's ship. Anyway, round two got the full clear, but it was still a loss, um, which can't be helped sometimes. And uh, round through, too many losses, um, and he got stuck on a really really nasty nest. Had to call in Mando just to get the full clear. So Scorch, unfortunately, ended the week one and two. Lazy turtle. Uh, round one was played well. Um, he got a good win, according to himself. 
Uh, round two was rough for him. He played horrible and, uh, according to him, lost his first ever fleet battle. Um, but he still won because the opponent didn't attack. Uh, round three, he faced an opponent with both Galactic Legends. Uh, uh, let's, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that he, you know, he still managed to clear them both, albeit a little sloppy. Um, and, uh, you know, even though he managed to clear both Galactic Legends, his opponent um took the advantage of him lacking a full clear to full clear himself ando oh ando continues his uh pretty pat pretty pretty poor start to the season unfortunately last week one and two had it rough yeah last week he got a one and two this week another one and two um round one oh yeah not a good start to the season at all um he he puts it down to his uh, mistimed experimenting. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that's his excuse. I mean, he's still getting the wins, but he's just not getting the win wins. You know, he's winning mm -hmm. the battles, but he's not winning the wars. Um, so let's hope that uh, next week he learns from his experimenting. Maybe we'll see if the results have come in. Solo base is up next. Uh, got the 3 0. Uh, again, beat a double Galactic Legend when he only has one of them. Uh, he went heavy on his defense and uh, stopped his opponents from full clearing twice. Um, the only offensive losses came at the hands of a single Galactic Legends Ray. Uh, Solo did a pretty decent job this week. Rambam. MMGA. You all know what MMGA stands for. Make Mace great again. There you go. Uh, Rambam, <laughs> Rambam had one of those weeks that you kind of just want to forget. Um, you know, pretend that it was just a dream. Um, because uh, Rambam went 0 and 3 this week. Yeah. Didn't one shot the fleet in round one. So that was the, the cause for the loss for round one. Things didn't get any better in round two as he came up against uh, a, just a more efficient banner scoring opponent. And round three, um, last battle just just got demolished. It, it really was just one of those weeks you want to forget because it, it wasn't that he did anything particularly bad. He just came up against some really, really efficient banner scoring opponents. So uh 0-3 for Rambam this week. I, I hope that uh, that he can, uh, you know, pull himself up by his bootstraps and, um, and kick on for the rest of the season. The second Jake that we've got in our lineup, the Texan Jake, Jake Johnson from Texas. Uh, Ray won, uh, uh, not Ray won, uh, round one. Uh, unfortunately, could not get the full clear. He could not kill a Galactic Legends Ray. Had to take a loss from it. It's always, it's always tough when you can't get past those GLs. Uh, round two had a few trip ups, but did just enough to get the win. His opponents couldn't do the full clear. Round three, full clear, and was efficient enough to snag the win. His opponent you know, got the got the clear as well, but didn't do just as good as Jake did in round three. Oh, everybody's been everybody's been asking how is Zaraf doing? How did he do? How did he do? Well, I'll tell you how he did. 3-0 and is how he did. 3-0. Mm -hmm. and But wait till you hear. Uh, uh, just, I mean, just how tough a week he had and still got a 3-0. and I mean, he had a very tough week. Two of his opponents sported both GLs. Both GLs. And his third opponent had a slacker and a relict Jedi Knight Luke. But would you have to believe it? He prevailed on all three rounds. All three rounds against double GLs and a slacker with a JKL. And that's not the half of it. Because he does have a GL. He's got a slacker. Do you know where he uses his slacker? On defense. Mm -hmm. He got those three and O's. He beat two Galactic Legends on two separate accounts without a Galactic Legend. That's impressive. That is really, really impressive. Tough week, but... Triple whammy. All right. Indigo. Uh, round one had to uh, had a two tap a GG. But, you know, 
like what Jake had to deal with in his round one against the Ray, uh, Indigo had going in his favor uh, with his Ray holding uh, very well. Round two was a little tough. Um, had to deal with uh, had to deal with the Jedi Knight Luke. Um, cost him three battles to uh, to kill. And uh, man, I'm telling you, Luke has been doing some damage this week. Uh, everyone's starting to get him kind of geared up and ready to go. Um, it's been exciting to hear. Uh, round three, uh, won by a matter of banners, by seven banners, uh, having to three-tap a Ray team. Uh, Slacker couldn't do it. Uh, CLS couldn't do it. The Bugs finally came in and finished it off. So uh, got the two and one this week. Dylarth Twilek Tactics. Um, had a pretty decent week. Didn't get the three and oh, only got a two and one. Um, had a really, really tough start. Had to face an opponent from Wolfpack in round one. Uh, so you, you instantly know that that is going to be a, uh, a, a tough battle. And uh, he uh, he didn't keep it tight. One misplace. One, sorry, one misplay cost him round one. Uh, round two against a previous opponent, which he said was a lot of fun. Um, so he picked up the, the victory there and um, uh, rounded off the week with a victory against a double GL team who had not farmed mods since 2018. So uh, a very, very good week for Dylar. Wow. On to Arnold, uh, the, the Grand Admiral. Uh, round, you know, he, he got wins this week. Um, you know, round one, he, he learned really quickly that uh, you do not mess with a preloaded Jedi Knight Luke. Um, let me tell you, oh my gosh, he got his crap kicked in, but he, he won by three banners. Uh, a three banner win because of his slacker. Did really good. Round two, um, you look at it, he did really good actually. Lost only one battle to a slacker, went in with his own and got the cleanup. Uh, you know, his opponents uh, didn't do just as well. Um, you know, lost two banners to, uh, not two banners, two battles to a Ray team, had to eventually clean up with a JKR team. Um, but again, Arnold had more banners on them. Round three, uh, you know, he lost to a JTR team with his bugs, lost to a slacker team with his Jedi Knight Revan. Um, but unfortunately, his opponent just did not have the minerals, having to three tap a slacker and then losing against a Poe Dameron resistance team. Um, and uh, yeah, that cost him the banners. And Arnold coming out with a 3-0 this week. And we're on to Klesso. This was one of those business as usual weeks for Klesso. He, um, no, swept his opponents away in rounds one and three. But, but he came a cropper in round two. Um, he went in a little bit light. Mm, I mean, how light he went in is arguable against a GG team with gas. Um, uh, he's, I mean, he even he admits that uh, if he'd gone in with uh, Ahsoka, he probably would have one shot the team. But unfortunately, he lost and his uh, efficiency in the other battles wasn't enough. And uh, um, the loss of seven banners cost him that all important triple. And rounding out our elite division and finishing off our... No, it isn't. Oh, oh no, you Mandy. Mandy. I am sorry. I've got Mandy. I've got Mandy after you. You got Mandy? Oh, yeah, we got, we got Mandy. Mandy. Oh. Still got Mandy. I did it last week. Right. I completely forgot. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to actually pull up Heinze's stuff because I thought I had Mandy this week. Uh, let me grab Heinze's. Uh, yeah, no, wow. Heinze, Heinze, Heinze uh, I, I spoke to, uh, I spoke to Heinze and Heinze confirmed he forgot to join last week. Right. That happened this week, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. I'm sure he'll be back, though. We know that uh, the, uh, this Australian madman can uh, uh, kick ass with the best of them. And, and, and here's the thing. Because it's 24 weeks, you can afford a 3-0. You can afford maybe one, possibly two. Depends how good you are. Um, uh, we shall see because Rambam had an, an 0 and 3. We've had a couple people that have had failed to join. So we'll see just how well they do throughout the 24 week period. So now, now we come to the end of the elite. Mandy, Mandy did not have a good week. He scored a <laughs> one and two. Um, got full cleared in round one and suffered far too many losses. Um, uh, 
which anyone can tell you is frustrating, um, especially when it's uh, GL Ray causing it. Um, did bounce Ray back was with the bane of his existence. This yeah, time. yeah. Round two did bounce back with his single victory in uh, in round two, but uh, um, again another GL Ray, so he couldn't get the full clear. And round three, story of Mandalore's week. Um, losses to GL Ray, and it was she who defeated him in the final round. So, yeah, bad week for Mandy and Galactic Legend Rays. So, that brings up the bottom of the Elite Division. So, yeah. we've got... Uh, well, you see, there we go straight away. Look, Rambam had a 0-3. Uh, Heinze's had 2-1 and 2. So Heinze missed the join, but he's not dead and buried. Far, far from it. I mean, two two wins... There are people above him. There's people above him on 3-3, three, 4-2. Three, so all he's got to do is stream together a couple of triple whammies or a couple of triple crowns, and he's climbing back up that table. But uh, Ando definitely needs uh, um, uh, 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 to make some sacrifices to the RNG gods. Um, either that or he needs to stop experimenting. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's see. Let's have a look at the top. The top. Oh, look at that. We have someone with a 100% record. And that's Mike. Uh, dude, Fruit Ninja Mike has been killing it. Uh, he he feels like he's on on track to go twelve and zero this season, and we're gonna hopefully see that happen. Um, and, and then the rest of it, we have a lot of five ones again. You know, it's a matter of just banners and just doing better in fights here and there. Um, so yeah, this is it's anyone's game. Yeah, a lot of five and ones there. A lot of five and ones. A couple of weeks that flips around left, right, and center. Absolutely, Mike. You, you better keep your words uh, because if you don't go twelve and zero, this is going to be tough for you. So uh, that 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 concludes the uh, the stats part of the show. Um, so uh, we're going to take a little break, and we're going to bring you an interview. Why don't you queue up the interview, Flair? Oh yeah, coming up, we actually have uh, you know the man with the best hair in Swaga. Um, we have Gridden uh on to talk about his gacs and uh and he had a he had an interesting round three this week so uh we're gonna talk to him and uh you know just see how he did okay see you back are you a member of team paul or team neil maybe you prefer story time with the llama or dabble in the buttery side of the force with biscuit weasel or maybe you like the escape pod talents from down under like heinzy and scotty no matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the Tee Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast's Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Pod cast. Does your guild want to tap into their full potential in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah! For as low as $1 a month per guild member, your guild can unleash the power of the game in ways you never thought possible. Ooh. Track your arena movements, guild progression, and much, much more. Ah. Contact Shitty Bill and get one of his shitty bots on your server today. Just look for him on our Discord server and tag or message him for more information. The link for our server is below in the description. Shitty bots, don't let the name fool you. SWGOH.GG is your one-stop site for the raw data behind the game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. From complete gear lists to intuitive stats behind all of your favorite hollow table heroes. SWGOH.GG has it all. With a .GG account, you can get a complete view of your own roster, see how you match up against other players, and even check out the history of your own Grand Arena Championship matches. You can also see what your opponent used on you to give you a better understanding of counters and team compositions to improve your gameplay. Did you know that they also have some great Patreon features as well? Ad-free browsing of their site, guild information, and manual information requests are included in their three levels of Patreon support. Check out the site for more details. That's swgoh.gg. Unleash your holotable potential today. Uh, so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are into our second week and our second interview. And... 
we have the man with the best hair in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. A man after my own heart. A man who, like me, likes to play with his toys. The one, the only, Gridden. How you doing, buddy? My brother. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me back. It's always a pleasure here to join the Escape Podcast. So, uh, thank you so much for having me back here, guys. I've, I'm have i actually coming off of a high. I just wrapped up hanging out uh, in person with Cubs and Urs. And my, bla- my brain is just, like, scrambled. So I just, it, it's been a crazy day, that's for sure. So, and this is just the cherry on top. Spend some time with you guys as well. Thanks for that having me. That must have been fun Seriously, doing your, thank you so much for joining us. That must have um, been uh, fun doing your GAC with the Cubs. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was really, like, distracting. Because, I mean, like, I want to talk to him and ask him about this and that. And I'm trying to do the GAC. And then Ur shows up. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> just, <laughs> it was nuts, dude. It was nuts. It's like, oh, what do I do? There's, like, 30 minutes as well yeah right there's like you, you were down left. to the wire today yeah there's about 20 minutes left and and we kind of intentionally did that because i had looked at it beforehand and i was like i mean there's rogue one on the front wall like okay. oh my god I mean, okay. And okay yeah and then a new team with like it was like legit like a gear i think seven or eight Django. and so i was like uh, i'm we're gonna be okay here yeah absolutely. <laughs> we're gonna be okay so your Absolutely. opponent right, effectively so... did what you do, which is kind of save your toys for offense and then kind of put your trash in defense. And you can just yes. straightforward battle of the banners. Yep. Yep. Um, so very much so. Um, which actually, it was actually extremely surprising. I was a little bit confused. I feel like he went almost too light on or on, on, on defense. Uh, my opponent had Galactic Legend Ray. So <laughs> I have... Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't put him on defense. My my only guess is because I just got Kylo Slacker. I just mm-hmm. got Slacker to gear 13 relic seven. Oh geez. Uh, yeah. And so my arena shows that, but I locked with a gear 12 one. So I'm oh, okay. maybe he kept it for offense just in case. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't on defense. And I was like, oh, okay. Cool. So that's that's weird. I, I always see the Rays on defense. Yeah. Yeah, so that so. one kind of caught me off guard. So I was wondering, maybe, maybe he's just playing around with stuff on, the, on, on offense. He was kind of just like, yeah, forget it. I'm not, I'm not totally sure, though. Yeah. All right. So um, kind of with that, since we've kind of already started talking about it, um, just kind of how's your, how's your first week been going? Uh, your, not first week, the second week. We're in second week now. I'm yeah, we're in second week now, Flair. Get it yeah, right. Get it right. <laughs> what was week two like for you overall? um in in a word or in in a phrase 100 percent better than week one (laughs) um week one did not go hot um that was really rough week one was one and two for you mate it wasn't a good week was it it was one and two um and i memed on defense just for laughs and giggles and then i forgot to replace my defense so it was a really poop team on defense it was was horrible so we just Uh we just pretend week one doesn't uh didn't happen but week two was fantastic um i ended two and one which um you know obviously i I would have liked to take the the full win there um but i'm really proud of that a because i was the only person or sorry one of two people in our bracket that didn't have a relic ultimate galactic legend so i'm still very proud that i was able to to uh still go two and one um and i full cleared all of my battles one battle um each time so really high banners but i lost my first battle by one by one banner it's 1913 i think it was to 1914 oh one geez banner. that's cool wow. it was literally that. by the yeah. skin of the teeth and if i had beaten that guy then i would have i would have been 3-0 uh so but i'm still very proud of it it was three full clears um three great banners uh much 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 better week i was very <laughs> happy with it how did you find your opponents this week were they easier than the uh, were they easier than week one? Was it because because I mean you, yeah. you're like me you like to keep your toys. So yes. were, were, were your were your were your main squads your Revens your your JTR your um your Gas were, were were the opposition that you used those teams against relatively straightforward or were you able to cut back and maybe do the occasional undersize? Um, I undersized quite a bit actually um most of my battle if i were to average the last three i think i got so the first the first one was 1913 my second one was 1925 and then this last one was 1932 um and so each time was was getting each time was getting better yeah and uh so average i would say my my average over the course was probably like 1920 something you know maybe 1920 ish 
um, mm. which I'm very proud of. Anything over 1920, I'm pretty happy with. Um, and I do that on purpose, just like you're saying. I like to keep my toys for offense. Um, I prefer putting my kind of faith and trust in my ability to win on offense rather than hoping one of my teams hold on defense mm -hmm. is, is ultimately what it comes down to. I kept running into, well, you know, I put my Darth Revan on defense or I put my Padme on defense. And, and sometimes it did get a tricky hold. But a lot of the times they either full cleared it anyways, or I found myself in a position where I couldn't full clear them because I didn't have that Padme or I didn't have that Darth Revan. Mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah, I adopted that, that mentality of I'm just going to go all out on offense and I'm going to force my opponent to out banner me. And mm -hmm. I'm confident in my abilities to get high banners. And that's through undersizing. That's through keeping teams that can recover a lot of protection. Jedi Knight Revens, CLS, JTRs, they can recover a lot of health and protection and get you maximum banners very easily. So I adopted that mentality and, and getting maximum banners is, is kind of what I'm about now. Um, and so it was, it was a much better week. And uh, this week, even though I went up against, uh, you know, some opponents who I'd still put um, there, you know, like a General Skywalker was on defense and some relic up Night Sisters, some relic up uh, Separatists, still ran into some problems, uh, lost a few banners here and there, um, but ultimately felt really good about the week. I was only confused about this last opponent. I think my last opponent was just like kind of goofing off. He mm -hmm. had like, I mean, we're talking like some of, some of his tunes were like rel or gear like seven eight on defense like a rogue one team on defense uh -huh. and and bearing in mind here uh, my opponent had 5.6 or 7 million gp a galactic well, should have been legend plenty of teams to throw yeah, out. you, you exactly. don't expect so, to see gear sevens on the front wall um, exactly. of the last round you, you just don't expect to see gear sevens mm -hmm. not on the front wall maybe yeah. on the back you maybe know on you, back. maybe on the back behind door number town but mm -hmm. with maybe a couple of 10s and 11s thrown in the mix. But yeah, you don't expect to see gear sevens on the front line. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, that's going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. Uh, like one shot this thing. Okay. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting week. Interesting week, but a week I was, I was ultimately happy with. All right. Um, I, I feel like we've kind of already answered the second question, kind of the weird teams, like this, this third, third round. Um, Again, for someone at your yeah. GP um, in Div 1, there really isn't, I don't know if I'd call it no excuse, but no no real logical reason to be throwing you know, weak trash teams, especially in the front walls. Yeah. I um, think, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you. Oh, I was just going to say, my, my only, the only thing I could think of is there are very like staple teams now. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in any division, oftentimes you find the same teams that are on defense. Um, and I almost use pretty much the same teams every time on defense. Mm -hmm. And they're the very common ones. And, and where this low gear tune was, was on a Newt Separatist team. And it was uh, a Newt lead with uh, Nest, Django, Dooku, and I think it was Droidica. Mm -hmm. um, and it was his Django who was like gear seven. And then his Nest was like gear 11. And so I was like, well, you're using the team. Maybe you just haven't leveled up that team specifically. And But they're still like, well, this is the defensive team. So I'm putting I, – that's not my only guess. I, I'm not totally sure. Um, but the other weird team compositions, I went up against Aratus. Uh, a oh, fleet. Aratus on Aratus in fleet? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, it didn't hold. <laughs> it <laughs> Obviously. Did, it didn't do anything. Um, I mean, there's what? Is there even a is there even a resistance tank? No, no. At all? Was no. was that the was the was that opponent in possession of a um, a galactic legend ray by any chance? Yes. Oh, okay. See, that might have been so because I'm... I was that's the only reason why I can think of why they've gone down the Radus route because the crew are all gear thirteen relics. Yeah, you got. And maybe they just thought they would time you out. Yeah, might as well use it. Yeah, so that one was kind of interesting. It didn't, you know, ultimately didn't do anything um the rogue one team obviously ultimately didn't do anything uh but otherwise unfortunately they're pretty staple i pretty much you'll, you'll always see night sisters general grievous uh old republic uh boss bounty hunters a newt separatist team and a geos and then it's normally that last one which is kind of a toss-up with like mm -hmm. a darth revan or a general skywalker or padme that's that's sometimes like a heavy anchor that they mm -hmm. might throw in there but i really didn't i didn't stumble into the, the no stone walls which I, those are not fun to go against when you have a Padme and both Revens. And, oh, that was a weird one, actually. I faced two Jedi Knight Revens. I haven't seen Jedi Knight Revan on defense for a while. Me personally. Both of them? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. Yeah, normally, normally those are safe for offense. 
Um, mm-hmm. So that one kind or, of. Or, or like they'll keep. I mean, if they have both ribbons, they're gonna keep one for offense and one for defense. Yeah. Um, that's what if I've seen. Even me at lowly div six, if I run into an account that for some reason has both Revens, um, I've normally seen them save Jedi Knight Revan for defense and Revan for offense. Yeah. Um, and they'll just smack it unless they decide to say, oh, my Malak is good enough. But um, yeah. but yeah, no, I don't normally see that right now. Yeah. Did you get so any holds? Because just... th- if, if they I... put that, if they put both their Revens, I mean... I mean, there's there's no way that your defense is going to be trash, trash. We're not talking like 70k teams here. We're talking, you know, 80 to 90k yeah. teams here, more more or less. So, I mean, did you get any holds during that I round? Mm-hmm. I did, actually. Um, one of them, he, they actually, they got sub 1800. It was 18, like 80 something. Mm-hmm. He dropped oh. three battles on one team, two battles on another team. And I think it was two on a second one. So I actually got a lot of defensive Wow, holds as well. okay. It was, uh, which again, I was just kind of confused about. Normally that doesn't happen. Maybe you'll see like two battles, maybe once or twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, to see it on three separate teams, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, Bobby. I mean, that must have, that must have give you, that must have give you kind of like the warm fuzzies. Cause you're seeing Jedi Knight Revan and Darth Revan. And you're thinking, well, I know I can beat this, but this yeah. guy clearly hasn't kept enough for offense to then be exactly. able to one shot all your teams. So when mm-hmm. when, you, when you see that in offense, you're going to think to yourself, "Hey, I might if I, as long as I can one shot these guys, I'm probably going to get a couple of holds." Exactly. Then then the entire factor of needing to be like hypersensitive about your banners or like can I can I get away with undermanning this team? Can I get away with three or four? You're just like here's five. I'm going to dominate you. I don't need to do anything else. Yeah, but kill no, you. that that's exactly <laughs> what that was exactly what I did in my third round because I was going for three and zero. Oh. Um, yep. And there were a couple of occasions where if Flair had been there in chat with me, he'd have been like, "Don't risk it. Don't risk it. You don't need to. Don't <laughs> be scared so because I work now." <laughs> so yeah, because I I I so, I mean my, my last round I literally my last round I literally came up against um a, a, an Ewok team of murder bears, but there was they were all weak. They were all purple purple gears, um but there was Zetas on a couple of them, and I thought to myself. I don't need to risk this with Nest. I do not need to tempt the fate of the RNG gods. So <laughs> yeah. sod it. I'm going in with a, and I went in with a Darth Revan team. I took them out. I just <laughs> I just thought I've got a Darth Revan team. I'm gonna use I it. I should have been here to watch this then and tell you no, you numpty. And that was it. I just <laughs> thought know. screw this. All I need to do is one hit everything. So yeah, that, that's the that so, so yeah. you're did your on that on that occasion, did your opponent go first? Yes, most of my opponents end up going first. Um, just uh, sometimes, it just depends on you know scheduling wise. I you know I kind of try to keep a regular stream schedule, mm-hmm. um, and oftentimes I invite you know some of my opponents if they're interested to see how the battles went. I invite them to come watch, and I'll say, okay, I'm going to do battles around this time. And some people have used that you know to their advantage. They're like, uh-huh. oh, he has these teams on offense, so that means he does have these teams. But most of the time, they're really cool about it. Um, but a lot of times, they just end up attacking before me, so. Uh, most of the time, they were, they they end up attacking beforehand, and it's because then you know how many banners you need to get, and then you're like, okay, yeah. I have to undersize. It's not just like you know, know, you just got a one shot. You don't care about banner scores. You just know that all you have to do is get one shot all yep. the way through, and that that's it. You, it's going to be enough for the victory. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so I think we've been kind of just skirting around uh, the the talk of like your you know your good teams. You're again, you're a person who saves everything for offense. You yeah. would rather just bring all the guns to the show instead of just bringing you know one or two prize possessions. Um, I think I think we're good for that one. Um, I, I think a better question for for next week because um, mm-hmm. I know you said you you had some modding issues with a couple of characters this week. Um, what are you working on for a week couple. three? everyone dude all of my mods were shot man they were all <laughs> because of I slacker mean, i did the slacker event right before and someone goes hey grid what uh what happened in this last round and i was like oh let me look and i gac enter, oh. join and i was like no <laughs> <laughs> and then i look and i go to click like back to review and i was like question marks they're just all question marks and i was like oh no i joined they trolled you oh they got me so good it was did so you do bad. that so- on stream honestly actually i think i might have <laughs> <laughs> i might have but like that's so, to think. you got slacker on your was it on your birthday you got slacker uh the day after 
day after, day after? right because yeah. i know you and you and paul had a had a bet going on yeah and i still owe him uh i need to actually make a clip uh <laughs> I need to make a clip for him um but, but you, dude seriously i mean i know that once you got your soccer you threw him up to gear 12 almost instantly right yes mine so mine's already at relic seven um or relic six he's a couple pieces from relic seven but six zeta uh relic six he immediately immediately mm-hmm. took him up there and put him in my arena team um but sorry I'm, my apologies returning oh, to your original fine. question was um yes for for next week or for next round i will have prop i actually <laughs> While we were discussing this, I almost joined because I went to go <laughs> review, and I was like, Ugh! <laughs> nope, "No, don't not that again." Button. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 don't do it. Not don't do it. Not yet. Um. So first and foremost, very easy one is yes, put mods on my people. Um. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, it's a, literally Rex didn't have a single mod on him. Oh, um. Gas had three of six of his mods. Um. Arc Trooper was missing two. Um. And then I had mods on like I mean my my best speed mods were on hux and i mean like don't get me wrong like hux is useful but like i put them on defense i'm kind of like okay i I mean yeah it's nice to have okay yeah it's nice to have a fast a fast hux but like i literally had this like 330 320 hux sitting there on defense overkill so so he was like with cruise leadership my hux is at like 360 speed so i mean like i'm sure that threw somebody off you know you like look at the speed check what is this guy doing? <laughs> um, but so yeah, like I had weird mods on all those teams and, and it really threw things off. Um, but that's a, another point of why I'm really proud of being able to get such high banners with missing literally. I mean, the only team I think that had full mods was First Order and uh, Galactic Republic with Padme because I normally don't touch their mods. I just, mm-hmm. you put health. Set them and forget them. them. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, step number one for sure. <laughs> uh, proper mods. Um, I've been playing around a lot with combining, um, separatist teams. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy, I feel like the separatist faction is incredibly versatile, but mm-hmm. especially with tossing in geos, my geos are not like, I mean, they're all gear 12, but I have no relics. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a team that I've been playing around with actually is, uh, sneaking in. It's, it's kind of dangerous because it takes away from two teams, but I've been trying to combine my general grievous team with, uh, GBA. Oh, so what I've been doing is, uh, a grievous B1, B2, and then dropping Magna uh, for GBA, basically, and then putting in either Newt or Watt. Um, oh, and it gives you the Brute, so that's the Force Taunt straight away. Yep, so you get okay. a Force Taunt, and every time Brute dies and gets revived and dies and gets revived, counts GG as gets a bonus turn for and does GG his moves. every time. So yes. it's, it's, a sneaky little, uh, it's a sneaky little team that I've been playing around with because my Geos are, I mean, they're gear 12, but any tray is going to beat that. Any tray that you have Zeta in gear 12, they're going to do fine against it. So it hasn't really been stealing banners for me. So I've been playing around with combining those teams. Um, I've been getting away from the full Old Republic team. Um, mm-hmm. The counters, again, very common. OG Kylo can solo them, so I'm straying away from that. What Vader more is, than does the damage now. Exactly. And so I've been straying away from that one. I've gone back to like the traditional scoundrel team with uh, Kira lead mission, Zalbar, uh, Vandor and L3 instead. Mm-hmm. Um, and just ignoring Karth and Candace and them. I just get rid of that team completely. Mm-hmm. So I've been playing around with that kind of old um, scoundrel team again, veteran Han since I got slackers, you know, relic three. So I've been throwing him into some scoundrel team. So there's a couple of teams I want to play around with, but, but ultimately I'm, I'm pretty basic, dude. It's like when you go to Starbucks, you get a vanilla latte. I'm using the same team pretty much every time. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm pretty basic. Oh, brilliant. That's all brilliant. Good. Thank you. Well, we've got a, uh, a a nice clip of yours during from uh, from this previous week to play you out with, but it was great to have you on for the show, mate. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, I hope you do well next week, and uh, uh, I'm sure that the the two one that you got this week will uh, uh, will hopefully reflect on the table, and and you won't be uh, you know in the bottom half. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the yes. two-one will take you into the top half of the division table. Hopefully, I think so. Um, before we end everything off, Grid, yes, of um, where can people find you, and what are you doing on your stream and YouTube channel? Well, obviously, you're on both places. Yeah, tell us what you're doing. Yep, anywhere you guys can find me is Grid and WWL. Uh, so Twitch.tv slash Grid and WWL, YouTube.com slash Grid and WWL. Um, right now, I I am trying. I'm honestly trying to you know, where it sort of diversify my portfolio of games that I play. I love playing video games. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. I love playing video games. Swigo by far is my dominant platform. So you will see me streaming Swigo pretty much every single day on Twitch. 
and making videos about it three to five times a week on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I rotate between games like mass effect, Detroit becoming human, um, dead space, dead space two, dead space three, um, battlefront, uh, call of duty Warzone. I play quite a few games. Um, so, but I stream every single day. Um, I rotate, uh, morning and afternoon times because I have a lot of people who watch, uh, uh, since I work with Heinze a lot, I have a lot of Australians. So I, sometimes I do some of the earlier streams, mm -hmm. uh, to catch them before they go to bed. And then I do some later streams for the people here in the U S when they, you know, get off of work, they can catch it. So, uh, but you will catch me, uh, on any given day, uh, on Twitch or YouTube somewhere. So this is what I'm doing. I love it. Uh, and I hope that you guys can come and just enjoy that. You will see this is my passion you guys i love it i absolutely in a word just love it and i think it's so much fun uh and and the more people that can come and, and hang out i love interacting with you guys and, and playing with you guys in chat and uh, having community play days as well so you guys can come join play with me uh sometime as well all righty great thank you so much buddy my pleasure guys thanks for having me all right guys we will see you on the other end of uh this commercial so and uh this uh, video see you guys <laughs> All right, so we're yeah, doing so one man solo. That's all you need. That's all you need. You all literally right. need nothing else. He's missing mods. He'll be, He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Send if him I, in. If I lose, because send him in. Okay. You will not lose. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, if you lead off with the two stuns like that, then you're definitely gonna lose, though. I'm just kidding. You're gonna be fine, <laughs> dude. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. All I you gotta do is take a turn. Yeah. Yeah, you, dude. It's done. <laughs> okay. It's just, it's See just, what I'm saying? I told you. Power creep Six, doesn't exist in 60, this game. 63 banners. 63. Power creep doesn't exist. And in this you guys game. wonder why I'm walking away from this game. It's so <laughs> yeah. stupid. It's one character. Ah, uh, welcome back to the studio. It's it's our thoughts and acknowledgments part of the show where we uh say thank you and acknowledge all of the new follows and any bits or cheers or anything like that because we're oblivious honestly we are totally oblivious to any of that stuff happening because we've just got a bunch of stats in front of us and we need to get through them within an hour so uh you know we can do these little extra bits at the end of the show so uh yeah um so how do you think the show went there honestly i you know i think the the awesome thing um even you know just kind of talk shop with everyone for a moment um we have all of um most i'm i'm wanting to say what maybe just five shy of all of our um competitors in in a discord now and um, yeah yeah no to... um we 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 we're missing a we're missing a cup uh, what is it i think we're missing so the only people that we're missing are we missing well we'll, uh... well we'll not share the names because you know some people don't want to you know maybe they don't want to join the discord but you know just needless to say we've got you yeah, know we've got all but five yeah, so, all, but, uh, all but five, all but in, five in the Discord, and it's it is awesome to see the the communication and discussion that we've been having over just the last couple of days, even. Um, and and these are people that you know maybe you know maybe wouldn't have necessarily wanted to have these kind of conversations or or to have initiated those kind of conversations, but we have uh, we're providing a place for them to do that. Um, with with the additional benefit of us collecting information and, and taking their stats and throwing them up on a board every week. Yeah, um, and it is kind of it is kind of awesome having a, a it's it's like our uh, you know it's a, our own private server with like sixty odd content creators on there because it's not just um, it's not just the uh, the fifty five content creators that either stream or post their GACs. Um, we've also got the production team in there as well. And one of them, I mean, one of them doesn't even do it and doesn't even do their GAC on stream. And that's uh, our stats guy, our statistician, the, the man with the figures, the man with the numbers, Sep mm. from uh, SWGOH.GG. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's super awesome. Um, but yeah, um, like we mentioned at the start of the show, um, we take this time to, to thank everyone who's followed and given bits or anything like that. Um, we actually have we have six follows today um, to mention throughout the course of the show. Um, Pete twenty two oh four, also known as Fruit Ninja Mike, uh, Davsum eighty one, David Meads, Scorch the Hoss, um, Doctor Zeppers, and Arid Bro um, all follow the channel tonight. And guys, um, if you are still around and still watching, we thank you all so much. I know Paul has thanked you all as you followed, um, but it has been awesome to. Uh, 
to see uh, this pop off in a way that, man, that's awesome to see. It is. It is. It's very, very nice to see. So, um, Neil, um, this this week is uh, this is Independence uh, Day, you know, Fourth of July weekend and everything. But uh, what's going on on the on the Escape Pod? Well, we've got our usual show on Fridays, and we have geeking out with Going Nerdy tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then we kind of do other random bits and pieces on this very channel throughout the week. We sometimes. Sometimes Paul will do marbles or a Jackbox games. Sometimes me and Paul will do uh, tabletop games. Um, other times Paul might just randomly throw Fallout 76 on and you can see him sat in his beanbag wandering the wasteland because that's what it is, right? Fallout 76 is just a wasteland with nothing there. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. called the wasteland. Um, so, uh, uh, Paul so- and I have also been doing... Um, the uh minecraft dungeons um, oh yes you have haven't you yeah yes that's been a kind of a saturday tradition at this point but um i uh, i know for me um you know having uh, having a day off on friday is going to be fun for me we're going to be uh i think we're going to be going back into breath of the wild i started that on my channel um earlier last week um oh and snap fort mort actually just gave uh uh you know giving 200 bits thank you so much fort mort for the for the support um oh, canadia day there's there's the happy canadia thing um in, in chat going on right now um but yeah we're doing that and then saturday um i'm really hoping that i get this uh, uh it's abraham lincoln on a t-rex on a tank top uh like a like a like one of those like workout shirts all right okay muscle top yeah. mu- mu- muscle top oh yeah yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna rock it for july 4th <laughs> if it comes in I'm With sure an American you will. headband. It's I'm awesome. Sh- I will I'm I will sure post will. links in, in the discords. Okay, you know, you know, you know it's that time of the show, don't you, where you get to say oh. your favorite thing in the world. I love getting to say this. Mm-hmm. Uh before we do, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will see you all. Uh Paul and Neil will see you all later on this week for uh for more of their shows, and we will see you all back here. About this time next week for another edition of GAC Hospital. G A uh, GAC Hospital. Get you get the show I'm name right. Come it. on. Um, be nice to each other, Dad Gummit. Um, y'all have a great night. See y'all in GA Center next week. Uh, Neil, hit the button before I screw up anymore. <laughs> you got it, mate. Cheerio, folks. Mm-hmm.